everybody. Welcome back to A Late Show. Joining me now is a nurse, pastor, and activist who was just elected as Missouri's first African-American congresswoman. Please welcome Congresswoman-elect Cori Bush. Congresswoman-elect, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. This is amazing. So congratulations on your, on your victory. Um, if somebody told you 10 years ago that you would be elected to the Congress of the United States, what would you have said to them? I would have asked them, are you sure you have the right Bush? <laughs> well, you know, your father was in politics, I understand. He was an alderman, wasn't he? He was an alderman, he was a mayor, and now he's an alderman again. Well, did he give you any advice? Uh, you know, my father's been in politics a long time, so he's given me a lot of advice. Um, first, the first bit was, you know, don't take corporate money, you know, walk in the doors, only accountable to the people. Um, and then most recently he's been saying, stay humble, keep your feet on the ground. And I'm like, I was just shopping at the thrift store. How much more grounded can I be? <laughs> you know, what else, <laughs> what else do you want to see? You know, but he's saying, make sure when you come home, because you're so used to, people are used to seeing you in t-shirts and, you know, and your movement shirts. And so we want to see that when you come back home. And so, you know, like, today. It's like, ho, 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 happy holidays. Black Lives Matter. Did you get your coffee? Black Lives Matter. What's your name? Black Lives Matter. <laughs> what got, what, what, um, what, what made you make the decision to go into politics? Because I know it wasn't something you had in mind. Oh, absolutely not. Um, it was after Michael Brown was murdered. Michael Brown was killed in my, in this district, in uh, Missouri's first district, in St. Louis. And, you know, I was working as a nurse at the time. Uh, I was, uh, I'm clergy, you know, so I felt I could go to the streets and just, you know, and be a medic and, you know, pray with people and uh, during the protests. But as I was out there and I'm just seeing the devastation in my own community, I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't sit any longer. Um, and so I just had to step up. I was asked to step up by the community and I did. But the thing is, when I, what really made me say yes, was the idea that my own son, who was 14 at the time, could be the next hashtag, that my daughter could be a hashtag or that another loved one. And that was too much to bear. Not when I know I could lend my mouth, my feet, and my hands to it. Well, when you when you went down to Washington for your first orientation, you you wore a Breonna Taylor mask mm -hmm. when you were down there. And I understand that you there was a... Uh, a reaction by some of the legislators who are already there to your mask that you did not expect. Would you, would you share with the audience what that was? Yeah, so it was the first day of, of orientation. Um, we had just gathered into the auditorium. Uh, everybody was walking around greeting one another. So we didn't know each other. Um, we were waiting for the first uh, speaker and people were just walking up to me saying, hi, Brianna. Hi, Brianna, one after the other, after the other. And each time somebody came to me and said, the first time I was just like, you know, I, I was stunned. And then I told them who Brianna was. And every single time I said, you know, I'm not Brianna Taylor. Brianna Taylor is this person, but I am Brianna Taylor, you know, in the way that I could be next. And it was just like, oh, okay. All right. Nice to meet you. You know, and so by the last time, you know, someone came up to me and said that I was so hurt and devastated because I feel like we have to understand the struggles of all communities that are everything that's happening in this country, especially something that was so big as, as the, the murder of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. Protests happened all over this country for months, you know, and we have to understand what black people in this community are going through, whether you're black or not, regardless of Republican, Democrat, Constitution libertarian or no affiliation. We have to know what people in our communities are dealing with and what they're going through. We're talking about life. Like this is not about, you know, ice cream. This is life. Were you, were you surprised that given all the attention the Black Lives Matter movement garnered, I know it pre-existed, you know, it's been around for years, but the the elevation of the Black Lives Matter movement after the death of George Floyd and the death of Breonna Taylor and all the protests that went on this summer, that that, that message not get through and these individuals' lives that matter did not get through to the legislators who will be making decisions about people's civil rights and whether that's guaranteed by legislation. Absolutely disturbing. 
you know, because there are black people in those communities that they need to make sure that they are, um, that they are representing. There are brown people, there are Native Americans, there are disabled uh, people who are differently able. There are trans, um, trans people in those communities that they have to serve, that they have to represent. And this is a daily, this is a daily concern for all of us. Like every single day, I can be Breonna Taylor. My daughter can be, be Breonna Taylor every single day. We have to take a quick break, uh, but when we come back, I will ask the Congresswoman-elect what her first legislative priority will be. Stick around.